Hello everyone, now I will talk about visibility and how it affects the uh, safety of navigation and what is the, its uh, relevance in the study of meteorology and uh, what are the different uh, kinds of visibility. For example, we will talk about fog, different types of fog, mist, haze, and other uh, meteorological disturbances that can affect our meteorological uh, elements in the atmosphere that can affect the visibility. And uh, most important is, what is visibility? Visibility for the meteorological purposes is the horizontal visibility. It's defined as the greatest distance at which an object with with specified characteristics can be seen and identified by an unaided eye in daylight. At night, it is assumed that the illumination of the object is raised to normal daylight weather. So it pertains to the distance that you can see with an aided eye without a binocular even. So for example, uh, in the radar, you can see an object that is uh, in the radar indicating six miles, but you cannot see that by your unaided eye. But uh, in some time past, you can see this uh, object in uh, three miles in your bare eyes or naked eye. But in the radar, you can see it earlier at six. So the, your visibility is not six miles as indicated in the radar, but your visibility is at three miles that is measured by the radar but you can see it in your naked eye so that is visibility but visibility is reduced by the suspension of liquid of or solid particles that is in the atmosphere if the visibility is reduced to less than one kilometer as a result of water droplets it is called the fog but if it is more than one kilometer it's called mist so upon this uh, topic we will talk about the difference between the two so if the visibility is reduced by the presence of solid particles the condition is called haze for which there is no upper limit or value of the visibility range you just uh, we can uh, say that there is a hazy weather or the visibility is hazy okay but uh, this haze is composed of uh, visible solid particles for example a lifting sand or a lifting uh, particles from the uh, smoke in the atmosphere or uh, maybe this condition is uh, af uh, affected or is seen nearby uh, deserts or nearby uh, farms and this condition uh, we may be from a dust storm or a sandstorm and uh, maybe it is uh, uh, from a volcanic activity nearby the area or a factory is emitting these uh, particles that is suspended in the atmosphere one of the most dangerous conditions to navigate a ship is restricted visibility because of fog, heavy rain, or dust storm. So imagine you are navigating in a uh, area of uh, traffic, dense traffic condition, and then the visibility become more become worse from uh, six nautical miles to uh, four, three nautical miles until zero visibility. So there is uh, some steps or navigational practice to be observed and of course the captain should be notified as per uh, written in his standing orders for example specifically to call the master three uh, when the visibility is reduced to three nautical miles so because of this uh, the ship's officer should uh, gather information so that uh, we can predict when will be the visibility worsens where is the area so we have to need uh, we need to have the uh, situational awareness for identifying the visibility when it will strike 
when it will pass, when it will end the visibility because some some uh, fog ends uh, quickly for example uh, some hours or in a couple of hours only but some fog can be there in uh, for example a week and this visibility this uh, occurrence of restricted visibility can lead to navigational dangers for example having a collision to other vessels or having a grounding accident because of sometimes may be maybe drifted and uh, maybe your uh, navigational aids such as the radar can be faulty and can be affected by its clutter one type of uh, hindrances in the visibility is caused by fog fog is a visible aerosol consisting of tiny water droplets or ice crystals that is suspended in the air at or near the earth the earth's surface it can be considered as a type of low-lying clouds resembling to stratus clouds because uh, as we know from our previous topic about clouds stratus clouds is a low level clouds that is uh, that can be suspended zero meters or from the earth's surface up to 200 meters only so with that we can we have to remember that fog is a type of cloud resembling to stratus clouds fog is a suspension of very small or tiny microscopic water droplets in the air generally reducing the horizontal visibility at the surface to less than one nautical mile it can see uh, from from this fog uh, so we can say that sometimes this one not one kilometer will be zero which is uh, we, you cannot see even one meter from you uh, it depends on the fog so fog shows up when water vapor condenses when the atmosphere cannot make the rising vapor rise higher and accumulate in a certain altitude these vapors become suspended in the air and stays there until the atmosphere loses its ability to evaporate it is due to relatively low temperatures thus saturating it and condenses on the surface fog is also a type of precipitation precipitation not outside the cloud but inside the cloud because uh, as we understand we need some body of uh, or element in the atmosphere to have precipitation such as cloud but being fog is a uh, type of stratus cloud fog can be a can be can have precipitation inside the cloud but not outside so that's why for example a vessel pass inside the inside the fog the vessel can experience uh, that its deck can be wet because of the uh, moisture or the precipitation inside the fog we have some types of fog we have radiation fog or a land-based fog so remember radiation fog is a land-based fog that is happening for example on over a plateau or over a mountainous range and that is formed by cooling of the land surface after sunset by infrared thermal radiation in calm conditions with a clear sky the most suitable conditions for its formation are clear sky high relative humidity very low wind speed and a relatively long period during the air can cool another type of fog is the advection fog if the radiation fog is a land-based fog advection fog is a sea-based fog so it is forms over the surface of the ocean or a sea area it is formed by a slow passage of relatively warm moist stable air over a colder wet surface it is common at sea whenever cold and warm ocean currents are in close proximity and may affect adjacent coast so unlike radiation fog 
advection fog may form under cloudy skies and with moderate to strong winds initial stability is relatively unimportant since low level cooling uh, makes the air stable near the ground allowing the fog to form so once it's formed it may move across the landscape pushed by low level winds advection fog can last for several days and is most common in the u.s uh, most specifically on the west coast of uh, united states so we have the, the difference between radiation fog and advection fog first radiation fog forms over land only so this is a land-based fog but some uh, advection fog needs surface that is already cool okay so sometimes we can say that this happens during late in the afternoon early in the evening or late in the evening but when the sun rises uh, this kind of advection fog will rise up thus uh, it will uh, evaporate and condense over a certain altitude but unless but the radiation fog or the, the advection fog rather can form over the ocean and this uh, advection fog or the sea fog can uh, last for several days unlike the advection fog that can last only for an hour or a period of time radiation fog disappear in some time after sunrise just like uh, what i said and uh, in right condition it can uh, resist uh, this advection fog can last for i can say five days for radiation fog a high pressure area is needed in contrary to advection fog and these are favorable for light winds condition another condition in the visibility is the occurrence of mist mist is a suspension in the air of uh, water droplets or wet hygroscopic particles that reduces the visibility at the Earth's surface to so less than 10 kilometers but not more than 1 kilometer. So uh, this is lighter than the fog. Its uh, phenomenon is caused by uh, small droplets of water suspended in the air. Physically, it is an example of a dispersion. It is most commonly seen where warm, moist air meets sudden cooling such as in exhaled hair in the winter or throwing uh, water onto a hot stove of a sauna for example for those of you who experience uh, having a sauna bath when you put a uh, certain uh, water droplets on a uh, sauna stove or these rocks so you can uh, see a visible aerosol or visible vapors of water rising and then disappearing in front of your eyes so that is one example of mist another uh, vis hindrance in the visibility is haze haze is a suspension of uh, extremely small dry particles so if the mist is a wet particle haze is a dry particles that is invisible to the naked eye but numerous enough to give the sky an opalescent appearance when we say opalescent uh, appearance it will appear such as a uh, bluish or grayish shade of the atmosphere it is traditionally an atmospheric phenomenon in which dust smoke and other dry particulates obscure the clarity of the sky Sources for hair, uh, haze particles include uh, farming in dry weather. So the dust that is coming from a uh, farmlands uh, adjacent to the sea area and uh, traffic. Also, this uh, traffic is uh, the dust and the smoke coming from the vehicles and also the industry or the uh, factories that is emitting some uh, dangerous smoke or hazardous smokes and wildfires seen from afar and depending on the direction of the view with respect to the sun haze may appear brownish or bluish that is what we call the opalescent appearance 
while mist tend to be bluish gray where areas uh, haze is often thought of a phenomenon of dry air mist formation is phenomenon of humid air however haze particles may act as a condensation nuclei for a subsequent formation of mist droplets such forms of haze are known as wet haze so when this condensation nuclei forms in a mist droplets uh, this is uh, what we call the wet haze so it is different from the uh, dry particulates from for example the industrial farming from the emission of the factories and smoke and from the emissions of the vehicles smog is uh, air pollution that this reduces the visibility in the mixture of smoke and fog so from the word smoke and fog is terms smog the smoke usually come from burning coal and uh, smog is common in uh, industrial areas and remains familiar site in cities today so uh, let me show you an uh, experience when i was uh, riding an airplane uh, on my way back here in uh, Batangas so I was from Hong Kong to Manila and uh, when I was in the, up in the air and approaching the Manila International Airport I can see that above the surface of Manila you can see a smog so the smog is uh, suspended above the area of Manila so you can see that this area is a densely populated area with many uh, industrial factories that is emitting these uh, smokes and the uh, presence of plenty of vehicles running over the city so that's why this uh, this part is having the smog but when the smog crawls down the sea surface from nearby factories it will affect the visibility and it will mix with the moistures from the sea and will worsen the visibility as it will add to the thickness of the fog so imagine if a fog is dangerous what if fog is added to the smog which makes it more uh, thicker than the fog so it the more thickier the, the the fog is the more dangerous it is to the navigators Frost is a thin layer of ice on solid surface which forms from water, water vapor in an above freezing atmosphere coming in contact with solid surface whose temperature is below freezing and resulting in a phase change from water vapor to ice. As the water vapor reaches the freezing point, and when this uh, water vapor sent in, went stagnant on the windows of a navigating bridge and the super cold air interacts with the vapors it will obscure the, vis the view from the inside of the bridge and to counter this ships are installed with window heaters so this is frost last uh, kind of hindrance in the visibility is the sea smoke it is uh, it is uh, associated with the occurrence of the frost wherein sea smoke is a form of fog that is formed when the very cold uh, air moves over warmer water and it forms when a light wind of very cold air mixes with a shallow layer of saturated warm air immediately above the warmer water and becomes this type of fog that requires very low air temperatures it is uncommon in temperate climates but this is uh, common in arctic and arctic regions okay so that is uh, our short discussion about visibility if you have some queries you have some questions feel free to contact me I am your I am a second mate Melvin Casanova your instructor in meteorology one and I just discuss all about visibility thank you